it's an awning vertical difference in atmospheric pressure as you go up in elevation we've been talking for a while now that the pressure gets less but there are also or more, more importantly to to producing wind actually differences in pressure horizontally and I'm going to uh, present here three ways that you can get um, horizontally speaking pressure A over here and pressure B over here so they're different and the first one is um, a difference in temperature. So uh, right here, we've got two columns of air. Let me go ahead and see if I can pull up my uh, pencil. All right. So we have a cold column of air, and we have a warm column of air. And one of the things about um, gases when they're cold is that um, they tend to kind of settle down. So this cold column of air, we can see basically we've got nice um, kind of densely packed um, air particles, excuse me, down here. And for this particular column of air, notice um, the, let's see, let me see if I can get my, up here, the air is kind of um, sparse. That's the opposite of dense. And so for our column of warm air here, it's kind of moderately, moderately dense. Okay. And then up here we have its, oh, moderately sparse. And so actually, with regard to column of cold air versus column of warm air, we kind of have um, a high pressure, relatively speaking, over here near the Earth's surface, a high at the bottom of the cold air and a low at the bottom of the warm air, but up aloft we have just the opposite. Up aloft at higher elevations we end up having a kind of a low pressure up here, the top of the cold um, uh, column of air, and, and, a, and a relative to that top of the cold, the top of the warm kind of has what we call a high pressure. So, but the temperature of a parcel of air will give it a certain, um, tend to give it a certain pressure. And cold air tends to have a higher pressure than warm air. Um, the other one, or another one, is, is water vapor content. Remember, water vapor, water gas, is a variable gas. And um, it's, this one's a little bit counterintuitive. You think warm, or excuse me, not warm, you think muggy, um, like high humid days, it seems like that air is like dense, but actually um, air that is has a lot of water vapor, even though it might be hard for you to breathe, actually it's more buoyant. And so that's why it says right here, moist air is less dense than, um, than dry air. Okay, and the reason for that is um, if you look at how much a water molecule weighs, it only weighs 18.02 um, AMUs, atomic mass units. The two permanent gases, two of the important permanent gases, nitrogen and oxygen, in the air, notice that actually they weigh more. And so if you start to go ahead and kind of substitute out some of those um, nitrogen and oxygen um, gas particles for water vapor, then you're going to have lighter lighter air. So um, water that's relative, excuse me, air that's relatively moist or humid has a, is less dense than dry air. Um, put another way, dry air is more dense than moist air. And the last one is um, if you have um, air kind of piling up, uh, we call that converging air. That's the second one up here, air kind of piling up. Just by definition, this one's kind of visually, I can almost picture this, just by definition it creates a high. So later on we're actually, if you were kind of an, an aerial view looking down, we had kind of a bunch of air coming, kind of converging or meeting at one spot. That would create a high pressure. And if we have air kind of leaving a spot, and this again is kind of looking down, down at the Earth's surface, that creates what we call a low. That's diverging air. So that's another way to get a difference in, um, horizontally speaking, um, uh, pressures can be different. So I'm not necessarily going to take you to today's uh, 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 weather maps. We're looking at weather maps soon. Um, but uh, 
I think that does it for this segment.